And now a spotlight on ESCOM, the energy utility in South Africa, a country built on coal. Andrew Brown speaks with Andre de Reuter, ESCOM CEO, about the company's move away from coal towards net zero. I'm Andrew Brown, Editorial Director of the New Economy Forum. As part of our conversations on climate, we want to focus on the concept of a just transition. The term was coined to describe the challenge of shifting from a high carbon to a low carbon economy without leaving workers and communities behind, causing wrenching social upheaval. To talk about how this transition is, is playing out in South Africa, I'd like to welcome Andre de Reuter, CEO of ESCOM a state-owned utility working through its own just energy transition. Thanks for joining us here at the New Economy Forum, Andre. It's almost impossible to exaggerate the importance of your company, ESCOM, to the South African economy, which was built on cheap and abundant coal. You generate more than 90% of the country's electricity, most of it from coal-fired power stations. You employ 50,000 workers in those plants. Whole communities depend on you for their livelihoods. Yet, just a few months ago, you were quoted as saying that South Africa must, and I quote, beat our coal shovels into wind turbines and solar panels. What does that mean exactly for ESCOM and the future of energy in South Africa? We have a unique opportunity in South Africa emerging from the energy crisis that we find ourselves in. Our coal-fired plants are quite old, 39 years of age, and midlife refurbishments were not done. And as a consequence, these plants are rapidly reaching the end of their useful lives. We therefore have to retire between 10 and 12,000 megawatts over the next decade. And that creates an opportunity for us to replace that coal-fired generation capacity with environmentally friendly uh, renewable energy. And of course, we have to do so in a way that is just to those communities that have invested generations in coal, not only working for Eskom, but also working for the associated coal mines. So you want to get out of coal and into renewables. Do you have a timetable? Yes, we do. Uh, we have an integrated resource plan, which was adopted as government policy in 2019. And this plan dictates that we will be uh, replacing uh, around about 10 to 12,000 megawatts of coal-fired generation uh, over the next decade or so. But what that means is that we need to start accelerating the process of building new generation capacity very quickly. Uh, government recently announced a procurement program of some 11.8 gigawatts to be implemented over the next decade. Uh, we welcome that. We think that is very positive and a move in the right direction but we definitely need more having regard to the fact that stating the obvious the sun doesn't always shine and the wind doesn't always blow and yet even as we speak you are bringing online two new big coal-fired power stations you're moving in the opposite direction so these two coal-fired power stations were conceived and designed a decade ago and I would venture to say that in today's economy with today's lenders, uh, financing could not be obtained for those coal-fired power stations. But we've got them, we've invested in them, and we now have to complete them and uh, run them for their full useful lives. However, what that means is that there will still be a role for coal to play in South Africa, but it will be a diminishing role even as we retire those old power stations. Your job has just gotten much harder. Unemployment in South Africa was at record levels even before COVID-19 struck. Millions more are now out of a job. By some estimates, unemployment in South Africa has reached 40%. How do you persuade your workers that now is a good time to make this highly disruptive transition from coal to solar and wind? And that is exactly why the transition needs to be just. If we cannot demonstrate to our workers and also the miners working in the collieries that this transition will be a just one, then there is no 
chance of this succeeding. And we therefore think that if there's a policy that uh, drives the uh, repurposing of power stations, so uh, installing renewable energy at old power stations as they retire, that we use them for uh, wind and solar, but also that we develop an industrial policy in South Africa that seeks to support maximum local content of renewable energy components to create decent jobs in manufacturing related to the transition to renewable energy. You're a state-owned utility. Can you get the unions on board this transition? In a country that's still quite wedded to the idea of state ownership, isn't it a tougher sell if the replacement jobs in solar and wind will be largely generated by the private sector? It is not an easy sell, and therefore we have to engage with communities that are going to be affected. The first round of negotiations that we had uh, with the affected communities, where we are now on the verge of uh, retiring four power stations, were a bit rocky, and uh, we were sent backing, and we have subsequently gone back for a second round of consultations, and that's been much more productive. And the engagements are now starting to revolve around, so what does this mean? What opportunities are we creating in this transition? Uh, and I think people are waking up to the fact that uh, the coal age is ending uh, very quickly, and it's being enabled by the incredible reduction in the cost of renewable energy uh, that we've seen over the past decade or so, which makes renewables a no-brainer from a cost perspective, but also from the perspective of schedule. We don't have 10 or 12 years to build new power stations. We need them in 18 months, and the only technology that can really uh, 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 deliver on that requirement would be renewables. The communities that will be most affected by this transition are within 100 miles or so of Johannesburg, uh, where most of your power plants are located. These areas already suffer from high rates of poverty, of inequality. What do community leaders there say to you when you map out a future of you, as you've just described it, uh, dominated by, by, by wind and, and solar? Unfortunately, it is rather a binary equation. We cannot continue to operate these power stations beyond their useful lives. Uh, we cannot uh, resuscitate them. We have to spend extraordinary amounts of capital to make them environmentally compliant. Uh, the cost of coal is going up because obviously transportation distances are increasing, uh, labor costs are increasing, and we are to blame for this. Energy costs are increasing. And consequently, I think people are starting to realize that uh, there is a need for us to go through this transition, wrenching as it may be. But it's also very positive that our union movement in South Africa is very. Uh, familiar with the threat posed by climate change. And they therefore understand that there is a need for us to decarbonize our economy. Obviously, they want to protect jobs even as we make that change. What are the risks if South Africa doesn't achieve this just transition? Some are warning of mass, social unrest, even violence. I think that if we don't achieve uh, the transition, if we don't implement this, this new generation capacity as quickly as possible. And even if you are technology agnostic, uh, the timelines dictate that renewables will have to play far and away the major role in this transition. Uh, it means that not only will there be significant increase in unemployment, which is socially and politically unsustainable, but there will also be an increase in the risk of uh, load shedding, as we call it in South Africa, which is basically blackouts. And that does not augur well for economic growth or for job creation. So we really are faced with a, a, a pivot point where we have to make this transition, whether we want it or not. And the challenge is how to do it as orderly as possible. 
Obviously, this transition is not going to work without massive investment in worker retraining. Some 450,000 workers in South Africa are involved or employed in the whole coal value chain. What is your responsibility as an employer in that regard? So we are very much engaged with our unions on that initiative. Uh, we are working very closely with developmental financing institutions. We've indicated a keen willingness to invest and make uh, available to us concessional loans that will support the energy transition, provided that it is just. So the social component is very much a part of the entire business plan that we are putting together, and it's part of the selling job that we have to do when we go and engage with those communities to persuade them that there is a future after coal, that it's a cleaner future, that it's a greener future, but that it's also a better future for those communities. ESCOM is already struggling with $30 billion in debt. Several of your plants are too old and dilapidated, so old and dilapidated, you're having trouble, as you just said, keeping the lights on, avoiding this load shedding. How do you address existing financial problems while raising the billions of dollars in additional capital that you're going to need to meet your green ambitions? Well, that's the $30 billion question right there. Uh, the debt is, is a massive challenge that we've got. Uh, and we are currently borrowing money to pay off uh, interest on our loans, which is clearly not a sustainable business practice. So we've got to change that. Uh, we are getting equity assistance from the South African government. We are uh, making strides with a potential conversion of debt to equity. So there's that opportunity. And then green financing, which we think will also free up uh, the considerable uh, debt burden in terms of uh, interest that we have to pay by virtue of the fact that as we decarbonize that uh, we will be uh, granted concessional financing which will come at significantly reduced interest rates. I think it's true to say that the whole of Africa is looking at your coal shovels to solar panels experiment. ESCOM accounts for 40% of the electricity uh, generated in the entire African continent. Do you see yourself in some ways as being a green vanguard for Africa? I think we are uh, at a transition point probably earlier than most other uh, utility companies in Africa. And we've arrived at this uh, point where we, whether we like it or not, are in a leadership position on the continent. And we've got to show that this is possible. So I think quite a lot rides on how well we implement it. We're taking this uh, quite seriously. We've, we've dedicated a lot of resources to it, putting in a lot of effort to make it successful. And a lot rides on it, uh, not only for ESCOM as an entity, but also for the country uh, because of the fact that we as ESCOM, with our debt burden, pose such a significant systemic risk to the South African economy. Andre de Reuter, CEO of ESCOM, thank you for joining us. Thank you.